How would I study Cantonese again? Check it out. Thanks for checking it out, KOMK, King of Mong Kok. I'm right here at you. Today, I'm gonna talk about if I were to learn Cantonese again, what would I change? Whew, a lot, in a way, in a way, a lot. But not too much, but because I still have reached my goal. The way that I started was very, I started in a classroom at first, but it was just a very kind of remedial travel type, you know, expressions and things like that. And then I came to Hong Kong and shortly thereafter, I just started kind of just focusing on learning on my own. I took a trip, did another trip, and then finally moved to Hong Kong. And so in between all that time, I was just learning on my own. And um, so I didn't really take a lot of classes. I did everything on my own. I had dictionaries with me. I would just try to build my vocabulary. And then by, of course, being around Hong Kong people and a lot of people at a time, I just started to just make sure that I was speaking always. That's what I did. That's what, that was my method of Cantonese learning was just trying to focus on sentences, making sentences, using vocabulary that I, I learned, things like that. I didn't write down a lot of things um, at that point. Um, back then, like I didn't make vocabulary lists, you know, I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't really make many notes or anything like that. Sometimes in my um, dictionaries, I would highlight words that I had learned, but I really didn't do very much like that. I just kept talking, kept talking, and it worked out. <laughs> but the biggest thing of it is, is that <clears throat> when trying to move forward, if I were to now do it with, with the experience and the understanding that I have now, Ha 因為, when you come from a, a native English speaking background, we don't have tones. And tones, oh, the dreaded tones. Tones would be what I would change first. I really would, I really would. I would make a very heavy focus on tones because Tones are what would equal pronunciation in English, right? If you, if you speak to someone who is a second language learner of English or English is a, an other language, a foreign language to them, it's all about pronunciation, right? If we don't understand the words in which they're saying, then we have a, a hard time communicating maybe or a hard time we would really have to work hard to understand what the, that person is saying so that's what tones are for Cantonese you could pronounce the same the word the pronunciation because I, 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 I should have maybe did a little research on it um, I try to remember that there's only I think 59 pronunciations of Cantonese words, 59, I believe, I believe so. 
Um, <clears throat> maybe if I, if I find out that it's different, I'll write something in the description. But <clears throat> if there's 59, it's the tones that make it different. If all each of those 59 pronunciations are at a different tone and then with combinations, whew, it's a lot of words, right? It's a lot of words. So you might say the exact word, pronounce it or, or say the word correctly, but with the wrong tone, it's the wrong word. Which is why learning a tonal language, especially a tonal language like, Hong, like Cantonese, you have to have very thick skin. You have to have very thick skin because um, kind of the Cantonese way, especially here in Hong Kong, is that people will laugh at you to your face. <laughs> So you have to have thick skin. You have to be able to be strong enough to be able to take the criticism, take the laughter, and it may be in a public space. You know, <laughs> there's been times I've, you know, long time ago, not so much now, um, actually hardly ever now, but I go into, I would go into, I went to this restaurant one time and I was just making an order to go. And for some reason I was struggling with the words at that time, it was a long time ago, but it sticks out in my memory as, as, a, <laughs> as a moment. And it was a small restaurant, but there was about maybe 15 people in it and they could he all hear me saying it because the, you know, some people are very loud when they respond and stuff like that. And the lady that was taking the order or trying to take the order, she was kind of like making fun of me and saying things like, ah, and it made me feel bad, but I was determined to place my order in Cantonese. <laughs> and I kept on it. I just kept, you know, and that's always been my thing. Stay in character. I always tell people that, okay? Stay in character. So, the fat yum, that's what I would focus on much more if I was learning Cantonese all over again. I would still do the same thing, building my vocabulary, still trying to speak as much as I can from day one. Another thing, because it's so important. That's what helps you pronounce words better with the proper tone. Because in your brain, you're not putting together words that are written phonetically, you know, in a pinyin. Um, you're not thinking about, oh, does that, should it have that tone or that tone? You remember that word as having that sound and that tone. So reading and writing is so important, so important. And while I did focus on reading and writing a, a bit at the beginning, which helped me, I think, I think it, it, it helped me. Um, but it wasn't until much later that I really, I took a class. I went to a Chinese university and did a, a three semesters just of reading and writing. Every Saturday I'd go to this class for three and a half hours uh, for three semesters to get a, a, a good level of reading and writing. In my Zanha Yugo Lay Sik Tai Jomanam, Kamahai Yatin Lay Way, Dohai Lay a Dori Gay Way, Lay Lay Tai Hago Pia, Lay Hoi Hoi Boji, Hai Tago Boji, Tai Goosey Shu. So many things that you can you learn to say and with the correct tone. So, with that, <clears throat> the last thing which I've always kept. But if I were to give advice to somebody learning Cantonese and going after Cantonese or any language, anything you're learning, actually, the most the single most important thing that I wouldn't change because I, it's what I, I've done is never stop. You know, you don't stop learning. You don't stop trying to get that language goal completed. That's the thing. That's the thing. Um, so with that, I hope that, because I've gotten some messages from people, I've, I've talked about my 
Cantonese journey, my language, second language learning journey, my Canto review. Dan 有時也是這樣,不過沒辦法,我喜歡學,我喜歡說。So it doesn't matter. You just keep going, just stay on the road. So with that, still want to focus on some I don't really focus much on on um, doing extra stuff for Cantonese these days just because so much I'm already at a certain level so my daily life is in Cantonese for the most part but I do need to focus more on reading and writing to keep that up because it's so it's such a, a complex um, written system that even after many years even Chinese people you know people who, who this is their first language they still need to keep reading as we do with English or any other whatever your native language is you still gotta still keep reading and writing and, and learning new things and remembering how to spell words remembering how to write words in Chinese one little stroke <laughs> the whole words wrong so with that stay focused stay on the path and for those new Cantonese learners focus on tones now I'm starting to learn Thai and it's also a tonal language so I've, I've learned the lesson that's why I wanted to say make this video for Cantonese I've learned the lesson <laughs> so now I'm focusing on my Thai tones um, although Thai has many rules for their tones so it's a whole nother and it's wonderful it's so much fun it's, it's such a great challenge so with that stay on the road stay focused focus on your tones Building vocabulary. Yatengwe Sengong. King of Mongkok. Peace.